today on Your World. People deal with trauma differently. Different, yeah. I'll give an example of a trauma like grief. You may find in a family, five brothers. Mm. Each of them has lost a mother, but they all react Different. and deal with it uh, differently. Before a client or a patient is, uh, you know, discharged, they need to have a plan. They need to have a relapse prevention plan. Yeah, so what, what exactly own. does that does that look like? It mm -hmm. has their, their details, mm -hmm. it has their, their triggers, mm -hmm. it has their problems, the problems they still have okay. and what to do with it. Mm -hmm. It has their goals. Mm -hmm. If maybe somebody was going back to school, okay. it, it has emergency numbers mm -hmm. in case uh, something happens and it has the aftercare plan. Well, the destructive cycle of addiction can be notoriously hard to break, but it is possible. And like we promised you on our previous show right here on Your World, that we'll continue with the conversation on addiction, but really focus on rehabilitation and what exactly that looks like. That is what will be happening today on The Conversation. So welcome to the show. My name is Winnie Lubembe and we're here at Tigoni Treatment and Rehabilitation Center. And we're meeting Japheth who will take us through what exactly happens in a rehab center. And uh, what do they do? What does the program look like from morning up until evening? Do they just sit, maybe take their medication and then play some games and all that? We'll look into that uh, comprehensively during the show. And Japheth, thank you very much. It's good to see you again. Good to How see are you, you doing? I'm doing quite it, well. This is beautiful. Beautiful. The yeah, environment beautiful. is really beautiful. Now I understand why. Yeah. Um, so like Tigoni chose this area. Yes. It's very serene and yes. calm. Yes. There's not too much noise. Matatu is hooting here and there. Yeah. <laughs> and also uh, when you come here, yeah. even going for shopping is a hassle. Right. So you can't even sneak to go buy drugs where. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much for hosting us today. Uh, thank you very much uh, And in our coming. previous episode, we, we you know, had a conversation on addiction and we yes. promised people that we'll focus now on what exactly happens in a rehab center because there's a lot of myths and misconceptions surrounding rehabilitation. But mm. before that, can we just briefly, you know, go through substance use disorders okay. and the addiction part and how, you know, it comes about? So substance use disorder is basically what people call addiction. Right. When it's alcohol, it's what you call alcoholism. Mm -hmm. There are very many definitions mm -hmm. based on where you're coming from. Right. But from a medical pr perspective, mm -hmm. uh, it's whereby somebody uses a substance mm -hmm. for short-term relief, okay. but the same substance has long-term effects and one is unable to stop mm -hmm. even when you experience those long-term effects. Okay. And uh, of course, for you to have substance use disorder, you must be using the substances. Mm -hmm. But not everybody gets to that point. Mm -hmm. It's because we are wired differently. Right. There are different predisposing factors. Um, some scientists talk of uh, genetics. Mm -hmm. There is trauma. If you've been through some trauma, your brain may change in some way. So when you use drugs, uh, it becomes very easy for you to uh, acquire an addiction, there's environment, and all of those things. And when we talk about trauma, you know, people would say, but almost all of us have gone through some sort of trauma yeah, in yes. one way or the other. But there are some people who sort of like work their way through it. Yes. Uh, and there are some people who are not able to sort of like, I don't want to say deal, but you know, deal with the trauma mm. in a healthy way. A healthy so, what are some way. of this, maybe examples you would say of traumatic events that might yes. lead? someone to addiction uh, and thereby needing treatment. People deal with trauma differently. differently yeah. I'll give an example of a trauma like grief. You may find in a family, people, five brothers, mm -hmm. have, uh, have lost their mother. They have, each of them has lost her mother, but they all react deal and deal with it differently. Uh, differently. So some of the trauma that uh, you see connected with addiction, mm -hmm. most of, his, uh, of it stems from childhood. That could be bullying, could be neglect, uh, violence. Maybe there was uh, violence at home, uh, divorce mm -hmm. that uh, causes feelings of uh, neglect, mm -hmm. uh, sexual abuse, constant physical abuse from somebody right, in, yeah. in the child's uh, mm -hmm. life. Okay. And in other cases, you find uh, trauma um, where somebody was maybe robbed, somebody lost a lot of money, mm -hmm. somebody lost a wife, yeah somebody lost a job. Mm -hmm. Trauma is basically when you lose something. Okay. Even when it's violence, mm -hmm. what somebody has lost is a sense of safety mm -hmm. and security. Mm -hmm. it, it could be grief. True. Yeah. True. So it's, yeah. it could they be a lot of things. And, and, and you find that yeah. uh, people who struggle with addiction have several traumas mm -hmm. that uh, 
have happened. Yeah. And they don't just wake up in the morning and become addicted mm. to something. And okay. maybe to make it clear, mm -hmm. trauma is not about the event. Mm -hmm. Trauma is what happens inside, inside. the the person. Interesting. Yeah. According to Nakada, um, alcohol is one of the most um, abused uh, drug. We always say alcohol and drug addiction, so I'm, I'm always conflicted. Like, is alcohol <laughs> not considered a drug? Is it? Yeah, what it, is that? But alcohol is the most used um, yeah. sort of like it is drug, a drug substance, right? It is a drug mm -hmm. because uh, the definition of the drugs that could bring you to rehab, they are all psychoactive. Psychoactive to say it changes your mood, mm -hmm. it changes your thinking, it changes your, your behavior, including alcohol. So why we say alcohol and drugs, and drugs yes. is because uh, of culture and society. For a long time, if you mention drugs mm -hmm. in a social setting, most people will think heroin, cocaine, marijuana, oh, yeah, like nobody will think alcohol. alcohol. So yeah. we just insert that there to bring it to your attention. Is it the same way people say, you may take one, why, but I don't take alcohol? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also okay. another joke right? that people do with the, in the society yeah. for people who wear vilemba. Mm -hmm. You say, kulikuwa na watu watatu na mokorino moja, but it's the same thing. Okay, I see that. Yeah, yeah, so alcohol, I would say, is one of the substances that is mostly abused. Yes. Um, but what are some of the other substances that maybe you have seen in your line of work that um, you know people could be addicted to? Yeah, there is uh, mogoka. Mm. Ooh, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. there's marijuana. Uh, there's heroin. Mm -hmm. There is cocaine. Mm -hmm. I've seen people abuse benzos. Mm -hmm. Uh, th these are pills. Mm -hmm. There are certain pills that are there. They are supposed to help people with mm -hmm. mental illnesses, but mm -hmm. uh, some people, some people abuse uh, abuse those drugs. Yeah. There is codeine. Mm -hmm. There is pethidine, mm -hmm. uh, which again is a pharmaceutical drug, but mm -hmm. some people find yeah. uh, their way find a way to, 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 to abuse, abuse it. it. Also, I mean, I've had a lot of people say antidepressants as well. Some people yeah. get addicted um, yes. to the same, yes. that they were okay before using them. Yes. Um, but then after, they can't stop and they become fully dependent on the same. So sometimes it's usually difficult then to understand something that's supposed to help you mm. get better and feel better, yeah. but you become addicted yes. to the same. Yes. Yeah. So, so how big of a challenge, you know, are this in terms of like drug addiction? Uh, and then now we'll focus on what the are some available. Yes. Specifically. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, along the way, mm -hmm. maybe somebody was in treatment uh, in another place okay. and one of their uh, prescriptions was for antidepressants. Mm -hmm. And they, along the way, they find that they, they got hooked. Mm -hmm. Or you may find that it was not even a prescription. They just heard about it and tried it. And it becomes a challenge because these are the same things that are supposed to treat uh, um, the, the diseases. Mm -hmm. But I, or here in Tigoni, mm -hmm. we focus mainly on what caused the addiction in the first place, and ah, okay. then we deal with that. Okay, I see yeah, that. Yeah, because the antidepressants, all the medication we can give you, that is only to deal with the symptoms. Mm -hmm. But then again, mm -hmm. You can not just wish away the symptoms. That's you have true. to deal with it. You have to deal with the same. Yeah. I see that. So then, what are some of the available options when we're talking about treatment? Because, like we said last time, some mm. people say, "Na kwani wesi watch it too." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, na, can't you just quit? Na yesi watch it too because it is a brain disease. Yeah. It's the brain has changed in a particular. Mm. So, uh, treatment options, the availability of treatment, or or the option yes. that you may advise somebody to take depends yeah. on uh, the severity mm. of. Uh, the addiction in okay. the first place. Okay. If it's mild, mm. there are interventions like brief intervention, mm. whereby you just find uh, maybe why is the person mm. drinking, are there some other alternatives. Yeah. If it's moderate, mm. there are outpatient mm -hmm. uh, treatment, mm. whereby the person can walk in, go through therapy. Mm. But it's, if it's very severe, and uh, the severity depends on several other factors. Yeah. It could be the withdrawals are very severe, the dependency is, is very tight, mm -hmm. and such factors. Okay. So if it's severe, the options are inpatient treatment, okay. which there is intensive inpatient, and uh, there's just a inpatient which is not very intensive. Mm -hmm. But at whatever level, we here in Tigoni, we offer all levels. Mm -hmm. uh, we use evidence-based approaches, okay. uh, which are, the first one is, um, pharmacotherapy, that is the use of medication. Mm -hmm. But like I said, even before you get there, we have to get to the underlying causes. Mm -hmm. 
The other evidence-based approaches, one include 12-step facilitation. Mm -hmm. There is a cognitive behavioral therapy, okay. which is basically looking at the thought patterns right. of the person. Right. Uh, there's DBT, mm -hmm. which, looks, uh, which offers a more uh, approach that encourages the client to gain better coping skills. Mm -hmm. There's motivational interviewing, mm -hmm. which assumes that the client is not in denial. Yeah. They just can't see the need for change or they don't, yeah. uh, they don't see the likelihood of them changing or yeah. they don't envision themselves changing. Okay. So that approach helps the client find intrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. So when we combine mm -hmm. those uh, methods mm -hmm. in a very individualized manner, okay. we are able to get uh, optimal results. Okay, mm -hmm. I see that. Yeah. The biggest question is, do you force someone to go to a rehab center or do you wait until they ask, um, you know, for, for, for help? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we need to find a place to just sit <laughs> so that we can have... <laughs> yeah, I'm itching to answer <laughs> that. that. <goes>. Yeah, because <laughs> there's a lot, yeah. I have very okay. good answers. Oh, so should we, should we go in? Yeah, karibu sana. Oh, this is really nice. Yes. It's cozy and warm in here. Yeah. Hey, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Nice seats. Yeah, so this is a sitting area, mm -hmm. TV area. Yeah. But we also do group sessions here. Ah, okay. Uh, remember the evidence-based approaches I told you? Mm -hmm. The CBT, DBT, or any type of psychoeducation. Mm -hmm. We do it here, mm -hmm. meetings. Okay. And then sometimes we... We, we do presentations. Oh, nice. And um, also video classes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. A lot of people would wonder, so first of all, what does a rehab look like? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, so what do people do? Like <laughs> from morning <laughs> until evening, what yeah. do people do? Do you just sit and talk? Do you, you know, what exactly yeah. um, happens? But maybe just introduce the concept of rehabilitation centers and, okay. um, you know, what's uh, yeah. That looks like. So, yeah. for example, like here in Tigoni treatment, mm -hmm. our clients wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. then by 8, they are supposed to go for checkup, mm -hmm. uh, pressure, one as it and the vitals, they call it vitals, ah, the vitals okay. are checked, All whoever right. has medication takes the medication, mm -hmm. and then immediately after, mm -hmm. we come here for our morning meeting, right. whereby we read recovery related material. They raise their concerns, mm -hmm. we set uh, the agenda for the day, mm -hmm. uh, we do meditation too oh, during nice. that time, okay. the, the first meeting. All right. Then after that, mm -hmm. uh, that goes to about 9.30. All right. Then from around 10, we have group therapy, mm -hmm. the first session to around 11, then we have a break, mm -hmm. a tea break. Mm -hmm. Then uh, from 11.30 to 12.30, we have another group therapy. Okay. Then there's a lunch break. Mm -hmm. Then in the afternoon, they have their one-on-one therapy, mm. or the individual therapy now to okay. tackle their issues. Mm -hmm. And then we have a lot of games. We have uh, oh, basketball. Yeah, I've seen a basketball court over uh, there. We have yes. football. Uh -huh. We have very many board games. Ah, Sometimes we do outdoor activities like okay. hiking. Oh, nice, yeah. Uh, I mean, the area is very conducive for yes, that. Yes, we yeah. do hiking, mm. taking nature walks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. just things like those two, mm -hmm. every two Sundays. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, there's barbecue. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Just it's, to... Yeah. yeah. I mean, aside from like the meetings and, you know, the one-on-one yeah, yeah. -on -one therapy sessions and all those things, it's also fun. There's also a the, fun aspect of the same because we don't want people to forget this other side of life that is, yes, you know? Yes, you yeah. see, when you're out there, mm -hmm. for those of the society that are not addicted, they mm -hmm. look at addicts and mm -hmm. see their suffering. Mm -hmm. But the addict mm -hmm. is usually seeing their relief. Yeah. So th they go through the suffering because of the relief they feel. Mm -hmm. So when they come here, okay. we like to show them that they are human. They, yes. they can have fun yeah. in but other also ways. But also get help. Have help, mm -hmm. have fun yeah. without using drugs. So, I like that. So if yeah. you do that over and over again and mm -hmm. you keep uh, repeating that, mm -hmm. the person gets a... Uh, so I can't be happy without drugs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like shifting the way the brain perceives relief. Yes, I really yeah. like that. Okay, yeah. so how about we take a break and then when we come back we'll, you know, be seated and then get to understand uh, broadly the concept of rehabilitation. So how long does it take? Like we mentioned earlier on the myths and misconceptions surrounding rehabilitation centers yeah. where initially people used to say, hey, you're chained, uh, you know, you're 
secluded in a room and you're not allowed to come out and a lot of negatives yeah but yeah. we'll also talk about that um you know and, and just demystify all the myths and misconceptions surrounding um rehabilitation centers and all that is coming up after the break see you shortly Welcome back and just in case you're tuning in, the show is Your World and today our focus is on understanding what usually happens in a rehabilitation center because like we said before we went on a break, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions surrounding rehab, okay? But uh, today we're here to set the record straight and uh, for those of you who are curious to understand, so then how do I select uh, a rehab center, where do I take my loved one and uh, you know what are the treatment options that are available in a rehab uh, center, you are in the right place and of course we have Jafet Murimi who, has, who is an international certified <laughs> counselor and addiction counselor <laughs> helping us really understand uh, this whole process um, and Jafet before we went on a break uh, we talked about first of all understanding the concept of, of, of rehab and what usually happens what the program looks like what is it that people need to consider when trying to identify a rehab center so what are the green flags and what are the red flags <laughs> as far as rehab centers are concerned uh specifically when identifying a rehab, mm -hmm. the first thing you do is make sure uh, the center mm -hmm. is accredited okay. by a government That's body. That's important, yeah. For us, we are accredited mm -hmm. by all the relevant uh, bodies. Okay. So that's the first step. Mm -hmm. There are many quirks out there. True. <laughs> mm -hmm. And these bodies can't accredit a, mm -hmm. uh, a quirk. Do you mm -hmm. deal? Diligence. Uh, diligence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. The, some of the other things, go interact with the staff, mm -hmm. interact with the program, mm -hmm. see, uh, have somebody explain to you what is on offer, mm -hmm. explain to them your needs or the needs of your loved one, and ask them the uh, hard question, how, how are you going to meet the needs of my loved one? Right. And, and if, if mm -hmm. they do, then... Mm -hmm. You, you can go ahead. You know, I've seen some rehab centers who say they offer uh, treatment online. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wonder if that is also <laughs> something that we should be cautious about. For, like I was uh, explaining earlier, mm -hmm. when I talked about the, the various uh, mode of treatment yeah. uh, available, mm -hmm. the outpatient one and the brief intervention one, that one can happen online. Okay. Because that one is basically psychotherapy. Right. That is to say what? Uh, psychotherapy mm -hmm. is basically the relationship between the client mm -hmm. and the therapist. Right. And if the therapist is um, equipped, mm -hmm. they are able to create such a relationship, whether it's online or mm -hmm. physical. Okay. Yeah. But there are some now, depending on the severity, that you can't do mm -hmm. online. Okay. For example, here we also do the the, the, the virtual one for mm -hmm. once we have done assessment mm -hmm. and we've looked at your needs mm -hmm. and we've seen that it's uh, plausible we, why okay. not all yeah. right so it doesn't necessarily have to be like inpatient they're also outpatient, um, also outpatient um, services and, and yeah. virtual uh, counseling earlier when you talked about the evidence-based therapies yes. um, and you said what cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapy, therapy dialectical be behavioral therapy uh -huh. motivational interviewing or motivational enhancement therapy 12-step okay. facilitation yes we'll talk about the 12-step um, you know facilitation in a second yeah. but um, we also hear of detoxification um, yes. because again different people coming with different you know issues that they're dealing with yes. so therapy is 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 one of the treatment modalities yes but yes when we talk about detoxification, detoxification yeah. is basically now also the other evidence-based approach is pharmacotherapy the use of medication okay. so sometimes you find that um, in the initial phase of uh, recovery the person experiences withdrawal symptoms mm -hmm. and some of it is very uncomfortable so depending also on the severity medi the medic or our medic can now review and uh, assign med uh, medication for that mm -hmm. also when one is using drugs mm -hmm. you know the liver is overworking so your metabolism is not uh, working very well so there are some uh, you find that you, you have deficiency of some vitamins that are supposed to help your body functions. Mm -hmm. So there's even medication to help with that, just okay. to 
help your body resuscitate faster. So when we talk about detoxification, again, I'm tempted to ask what exactly do you use to detox? <laughs> <laughs> but again, we have, again, to be cautious because the more you tell people, yes. people might think, as you can do this at home and then, you know, y yes. that's it. Yes. But then how long does, you know, this whole detoxification process maybe take? Uh, it all depends mm -hmm. on the severity. Okay. A long time ago, uh, there were, you either wear this suit, if yes. it doesn't fit, you wear this suit. Mm. But now we have new technology, okay. we have new knowledge, we have new information mm -hmm. that allows us to sit with a patient, mm. assess them, and tailor make uh, their okay. treatment. The treatment. Okay. So I can't say two, three, four, mm. nine, evo, evo, evo. Okay, yeah. I see that. Uh, and for the treatment aspect, yeah? So do you just deal with uh, alcohol and drug addiction or? What other issues? <laughs> yes, so <laughs> what know, happens yeah. is there are other mental uh, illnesses. Okay. We say you have a problem with your mental health mm -hmm. if the way you think, the way you behave, or your emotions are either in your way or they are affecting the people around you. Right. So you find some people may have uh, mental illnesses like uh, depression, anxiety disorders, mm -hmm. or psychotic disorders even before they start using drugs. Mm -hmm. And you find that they use drugs to yeah. to numb the sy symptoms, you call that self-medication, or you find somebody was predisposed to a mental illness and when they use the drugs, it, it, it induced the mental illness. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you find cases of dual diagnosis uh, or multi-diagnosis or something we call comorbidity, whereby uh, somebody may have two different mm -hmm. diagnoses. So we also deal with that. Okay. Yeah, so I the see. approach is holistic okay. to make sure we are not just dealing with one thing mm -hmm. or referring you to another place for this other thing. Mm -hmm. We deal with everything. Okay. So how long ideally um, does it take uh, during the, you know, the whole treatment process uh, in a rehabilitation center? The standard period is 90 days. Okay. That is three months. All right. But like I said, mm -hmm. there are instances where it can go beyond mm -hmm. or even less ah, okay. depending on mm -hmm. the assessment. Okay, yeah. so then at what point do you say this person is okay and fit to go home? <laughs> Very good question. Yeah. In the beginning of the process, mm -hmm. if you come here, mm -hmm. the first thing I do is I'll do screening mm -hmm. and the nurse and you'll be assessed by uh, the doctor. You'll yeah. have a psychiatric review. So you'll have a lot of assessment. Mm -hmm. So from your assessment, we get what you are struggling with. Mm. Once we get what you are struggli struggling with, we have objectives mm -hmm. and intervention for, for uh, designed to help you overcome your obstacles. Right. So we say you are ready for discharge mm -hmm. when those objectives have uh. been met. So do you sit down with the patient yes. uh, and, and say, it's, so it's, this It's client-oriented, right. it's, it's goal-oriented and client-centered. Mm and trauma-informed care. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. okay. say that again. <laughs> uh, clients? Goal-oriented. Goal-oriented. Client-centered, uh -huh. trauma-informed care. I really like that. Mm. Okay, um, so after you meet all these objectives, that yes. is when you release... Um, you yes, we, we have a discharge criteria. Okay. M met uh, uh, the clinical objectives, mm -hmm. you have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Do you have uh, a stable support system? Mm -hmm. So we look at all these factors. Mm -hmm. We don't just look, okay, you've met the objectives, now go. Now go Where by. are you going? What it's are you going to, to do? You. What's yeah. the aftercare? Mm -hmm. or what does it look? Mm -hmm. What does life look like for you mm -hmm. once you mm -hmm. go? Because then again, we don't want you coming back. That's true. And yeah. also, do you have your own plan, your own relapse prevention plan? Oh. So we look at all of those things. Yeah. And while you are here now, we help you now achieve all of those things. Yeah. So it's a team effort. I see that. Mm -hmm. And you also talked about the 12 step um, yes. philosophy, right? So so what exactly, because we usually hear <laughs> this, and for those people who like to watch movies as well, yeah. there's the 12 step AA uh, <laughs> meetings and all those things, yeah. Uh, so what exactly does that mean? I'll keep it very short. Okay. So long time ago, mm -hmm. in the United States of America, yeah. there was this guy okay. who was struggling with alcoholism. He right. tried everything, they tried everything. Then one day he met a friend and they had also tried everything. But then they discovered when they sit together and talk about their problems, they are able to stay off drugs. Mm. Then with time, mm. as time progressed, mm. many people joined them. All right. Then the society uh, there noticed that there's this movement, that these people were meeting and they are beating alcoholism. Mm. So the question was, uh, what are you guys what doing? Exactly, so yeah. they sat 
and ask by the way this is working what are we doing yeah. so they broke it down to mm -hmm. the 12 steps that uh, this is what we've been mm -hmm. doing okay. and now research has shown that mm -hmm. uh, those steps incorporated into somebody's uh, recovery program mm -hmm. Uh, really helps people mm. overcome mm. alcoholism. I see that. Yeah. So, so I know it's 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 a lot. You know, when you talk about <laughs> twelve steps, yeah. But what are the main components of the twelve step uh, program? Uh, the first thing is acceptance, okay. accepting you have a problem, mm -hmm. accepting help, mm -hmm. uh, the concept of a higher power. Mm -hmm. That is uh, accepting that uh, your your will is uh, prone to manipulation. All right. You have envy, you have jealousy, you have pride. Mm. Those can be manipulated, but mm. a higher power cannot be manipulated. Sure. It doesn't have to be Christian, Muslim, or anything. It's just something Submit beyond you. Yeah. And uh, there is making amends mm. for mm. the people you've wronged mm. and allowing mm -hmm. um, your higher power or even yourself mm. uh, to to overcome your shortcomings. Mm. And now there are principles like honesty, mm. open-mindedness, willingness, courage, trust, mm. faith, that mm. you're supposed to incorporate in your day-to-day -day, mm. uh, activities. In fact, in all of your affairs, mm. just to help you lead a better life. The other question was, so then, do we wait for someone to ask for help or do we force them? Because we've also had those instances where people literally drag their loved, per loved one to a rehab center and leave them there and say, we're to kujia when you're okay. So what, what do we do? It, it depends. Mm. It's all about weighing mm -hmm. what's important and what's happening. Mm -hmm. Allow me to answer that with another question. Sure. If you find your loved one mm -hmm. trying to commit suicide, mm -hmm. let's say using a rope, mm -hmm. do you cut the rope first mm -hmm. or do you ask them, can I cut the rope for you? Mm -hmm. you yeah. You get to, That's a, yeah. You, you get to weigh. Ha, okay. Okay, all right. So thinking about cut the rope, or ask okay. <laughs> whether to cut the rope. Mm. So then at what point do you, you know, decide to take this person for help? No, number one, it's uh, look around, you look at the consequences of uh, this person's addiction, right. both on themselves and other people. Mm. So it's something that you have to sit mm. and be taken through mm. to really come to a point whereby you choose the best, um, the best approach. Mm -hmm. Number one, you have to ask yourself, mm -hmm. what are some of the other things I've tried? Okay. Because then again, you cannot keep trying the same things, yeah. expecting okay. different okay. Yeah. Results. results. So there are all these factors to look at. Mm -hmm. Do I have the resources even? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's important. And what are the available resources? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, to help to help this person. Mm. Okay, um, and the misconceptions that we talked about, um, you know, earlier on, where some people say you change this person, uh, the person is locked, you know, put in isolation, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, left there to deal with their own issues. Mm. Um, can we just address this in terms of um, rehab centers now and the programs that are being offered versus back then? Addiction has been misunderstood, mm -hmm. uh, very misunderstood, because symptoms of addiction mm. are mostly behavioral and we experience each other through our behaviors. Mm -hmm. So if you see uh, an addict behaving in a way you don't want, mm -hmm. even if it's your brother, your, your son, mm -hmm. you think they are doing that to hurt mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So the instinct then mm -hmm. is to put them discipline, mm -hmm. eh? to discipline them, it's yeah. lack of discipline. Mm -hmm. But research has shown that is not the case. Yeah. That is why now we have these evidence-based approaches. Mm -hmm. Now we know mm -hmm. addiction stems from trauma. It's very hard to get somebody who's addicted without trauma. Yeah. Now we have trauma-informed approaches mm -hmm. that guide us in a way that we don't inflict more trauma on the client. Mm -hmm. We understand their trauma and we help them process their trauma. Okay. So it has to be painless from... Yeah, yeah. yeah from your mm. end. Yeah. Okay, all right. So no one is being beaten, <laughs> no one is being changed. <laughs> no more inflicting no one more is, trauma. Yeah, no if you walk uh, through, uh, in through the doors of Tigoni and yeah. meet me, yeah. Uh, the only pain that will mm -hmm. disturb you is pain from your past. Yeah. No, nothing yeah. else while, yeah. while you're here. And by the time you come out, there's no more. We there's have no processed pain. most of I that. I really like and, that. And you have tools mm -hmm. and new coping mechanisms. I see that. The pain may not all go away mm -hmm. uh, practically. Yeah. Other new pain may come because we are not in control of tomorrow. True. But what you'll have mm -hmm. is positive coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. You'll have a toolbox. Yeah. To, to, to now deal with your challenges going, mm -hmm. going yeah. forward. I mean, you're better equipped to handle yes. you know, 
whatever form of trauma, pain, you know, that might, might come your way. Yes. Okay, let's take a break then. When we come back, we'd want to understand, you talked about relapse, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people would ask, why is it that my loved one relapsed after coming out of rehab? Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the ways to sort of like prevent um, cases of relapse, but also family members? Because most of the time when we talk about addiction, we always focus on the individual and we forget the family. The family so then members. how can families be supported to also you know accept this person uh, first of all back into the society but also help themselves understand what they can do to trigger this person you know to addiction and to prevent um, you know all that so yes. it's a lot uh, still it. to discuss yeah, I'm looking forward <laughs> but to all it. that is uh, coming up after the break stay with us Welcome back and the show is your world and like we said today the focus of conversation is on understanding rehabilitation centers and as you can see we are out here in a beautiful beautiful gazebo and we'll be focusing mostly on reintegration back to the society and what exactly uh, that looks like and of course we have Japheth here to take us through all that uh, processes um, but Japheth so we said at what point do you you know release someone to go outside but since we are outside going back to the society <laughs> do you allow for visits by the way like can family members yes, visit yes yes uh, family family members can visit all right we have policy but then again like i said we have some have special needs mm. so we cater for that okay yes okay so mm. if one wants to visit it's not just you come in and you go no, out no, as, as yeah. you wish it's Structured. It's, it, it is structured. Okay. Really. Okay. Yeah. So after how long can can someone visit? It depends. Okay. Again on their needs mm -hmm. and uh, what brought them there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, as a counselor, I can sit down and see that uh, maybe we need a family session. Mm -hmm. up, yeah, yeah. I see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's first of all understand relapse before we even talk about the reintegration back to the society. Mm -hmm. So. What are the chances that someone might relapse after you know they come out of a rehab center? The chances are not quantifiable, okay, because we are dealing with a, a brain disease here. The thing is, whether you are in recovery 10 years mm -hmm. or in recovery 10 days, mm -hmm. uh, if you relapse, you go back to the same, okay. It is a relapsing brain disease. Mm -hmm. One other characteristic of addiction mm -hmm. is cravings. Okay. And sometimes you don't choose whether you get cravings. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Okay. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. you're, you're triggered or your mind just remembers mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, and because you, you, you are so used to deal with the trigger using mm -hmm. the drugs, mm -hmm. your mind may remember. Okay. Relapses happen mm -hmm. when cravings become overwhelming or the person is unable to control their, mm -hmm. their, their cravings. Okay. Even before you go to relapse prevention, one of the things we do in the program mm -hmm. is help people identify their triggers. Mm -hmm. what, what could trigger your cravings? Okay. How do you recognize these are just cravings? It's not mm -hmm. because they make it seem mm -hmm. real that you mm -hmm. really need the drug. How do you recognize the cravings mm -hmm. and what do you do when you have cravings so, so that you don't use mm -hmm. uh, the relapse? Okay. The other thing, relapse happens in stages. Interesting. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> 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 all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, uh -huh. Yes. Before you you even touch the drink, mm. the first stage of relapse is emotional. Okay. That is where your 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 emotions start acting up. You are not in control of your emotions. You are irritable. Mm. Then there is a mental stage mm. where by now your drug starts thinking about uh, the drink mm -hmm. or the drug of choice, how it may feel, and uh, then eventually now you go to the third stage, which mm -hmm. is a physical relapse, where you actually take the drink. And for some people, mm -hmm. those stages may even stretch up to two years, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. So what we do for clients is help uh, equip them mm -hmm. with knowledge mm -hmm. and self-awareness mm -hmm. on what to do on each stage before mm -hmm. you get to the to the, to the, to the final stage oh, but in yeah. real sense it's mm -hmm. a journey you have to walk day mm -hmm. by day mm -hmm. one day at a time okay mm -hmm. so you said then before a client or a patient is um, you know discharged if we can use that word yes. they need to have a plan they need to have a relapse prevention plan yeah so what, what exactly own. does that does that look like it mm -hmm. has their, their details, mm -hmm. it has their, their triggers, mm -hmm. it has their problems, the problems they still have okay. and what to do with it. Mm -hmm. It has their goals, mm -hmm. 
if maybe somebody was going back to school okay. it, it has emergency numbers mm -hmm. in case uh, something happens mm -hmm. and it has the aftercare plan okay for for us in tigoni mm -hmm. we take aftercare seriously mm -hmm. or we have a uh, six months free aftercare oh interesting okay why mm -hmm. because oh, when somebody comes here and starts their recovery here mm -hmm during the program they are learning new things so it's practically like a baby learning to walk okay and before the baby really can start running around mm -hmm. you've held their, hand, their yeah. hand yeah for quite some time so we take that very seriously yeah and uh yeah can come affordably say we have a very high success rate because oh, of that then. aftercare program yeah. yeah it's actually important mm -hmm. i think at this point is where we bring in then the family yeah. so of course this person goes through treatment like i said 90 days is the standard but yeah. again could be lesser could be could be more yes. so then at what point do you bring in family members because when one family member is affected the entire family is impacted yes, in one yes, way or the yes, other yes, yes, so yes. when do you bring in the family member either for counseling or to mm. prepare them to receive this person back into the society so when we bring in the family member mm -hmm. it, it starts when they when they come okay we have to psychoeducate them okay. whatever you are seeing in your loved one it's this and this mm -hmm. so that even when they go home yeah. they are empowered mm -hmm. and then at some point mm -hmm. during the first month of mm -hmm. the program mm -hmm. we also start family therapies which mm -hmm. are very important right. to to either help them communicate better, to deal with their issues. You find that some of the trauma, the person struggling with addiction yeah, is struggling with, also family. other family members struggle, struggle with, with it. Yeah. And it's very important because, you see, for drugs, mm -hmm. uh, primarily, even without looking at the trauma, mm -hmm. drugs affect the way you think, the way you behave, and your emotions. True. Where do you take your behavior? Mm -hmm. Where do you take your emotions? Where do you take your thoughts? It's your family mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. So if it's flawed, mm -hmm. the family members also mm -hmm. get sick. Mm -hmm. And what you find happening, because of love and because of the mm -hmm. bond they have, mm -hmm. they get the urge to save this person. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you try everything, nothing's working, you mm -hmm. get the urge. So family members start neglecting themselves systems in the families yeah, so start to crumble yeah. mm -hmm. generally it's a phenomenon called uh, co codependency mm -hmm. whereby now you become like now you are addicted to the addict yeah. so you also need therapy for you to break that That's pattern true. because if this person comes in here mm -hmm and uh, then they get all the tools of recovery mm -hmm. and they come to you mm -hmm. and you've not yet um <coughs> honed mm -hmm. or you've not yet dealt with the pain that this person cost you, mm. you could find yourself unconsciously mm. triggering them. That's true. Uh, back yeah. to substance. Yeah, back to substance. So, how do you prevent uh, relapse now from a family perspective? Because, like mm. you said, before a patient is released, mm. they need to have that prevention, relapse prevention plan. Yes. So, for the family, in terms of offering this person support so mm. that they don't go back to, mm. you know, to, to, to suffering and to addiction. Mm. So, what exactly? do they need to sort of like do or what exactly does support look like from um, yeah. a family uh, perspective? It, it is a team effort really mm -hmm. uh, from three sides, okay. from us, mm -hmm. uh, the, the practitioners, mm -hmm. the client mm -hmm. and the family members. Okay. Number one, uh, communication needs to be enhanced mm -hmm. and healthy. Yeah. Boundaries. Mm -hmm expectations have to be clear mm -hmm. because that is another thing that brings problem because yeah. you're expecting you come out of here maybe yeah. you brought your husband mm -hmm. and uh, you're expecting you are getting an angel home mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, yeah. There, there are also other issues yeah. yeah all right yeah then we also help them start um a system of accountability okay. whereby they can be accountable with each other mm -hmm. whether it's the person who who was struggling with addiction mm -hmm. or is a family member mm -hmm. there has to be that accountability issue whereby mm -hmm. they are accountable to each other so it okay it put a system in place where it's very easy mm -hmm. to to you know mm -hmm. to mitigate uh, mm -hmm. relapse okay yes. i see that mm -hmm. so reintegrating back to the study remember we talked about stigma yes uh, which is <laughs> still a big issue even you know right in, in this day and age 2024 yes. but people are still being stigmatized yes. um when people learn that you know this person say for example winnie you know was in a rehab center there's usually that aspect of hey hey this one you know <laughs> you yeah. know and all those things yeah so then dealing with that because when you go to the society you will 
face those things, right? Mm. So then how do you deal with stigma, um, either as a patient, but also as a family member, so that you shield um, yeah. your loved one? There are three, three things that happen mm -hmm. primarily when you're here. Mm -hmm. Apart from assessment, mm -hmm. there is empowerment mm -hmm. and self-efficacy. Okay. So for me, mm -hmm. to my clients, mm -hmm. is to empower them mm -hmm. to know that it's not them, mm -hmm. it's this is how the society works. Mm -hmm. So if you find people drawing you funny faces or saying funny things, mm -hmm. this is how you deal with it. It's, yeah. it's not necessarily, they're not doing that because of you, you it's because yeah. of their lack of. Okay. Of awareness, of yeah. awareness yeah. and knowledge, mm -hmm. and true to the family, mm -hmm. because w when we see the problem is in the society, mm -hmm. it's 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 very hard to sanitize mm -hmm. everybody. It's v it's a very mm -hmm. gradual mm -hmm. process, process yeah. and we are not mm -hmm. there yet. Okay. So for me, it's to empower the client, mm -hmm. is to empower mm -hmm. the family, I see so that. that they can own the recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, for some, they are able to share their story mm -hmm. without shame. Mm -hmm. It also helps. Mm -hmm. For some, they are not able because people are different. Yeah. But still, mm -hmm. empowerment. Yeah. yeah, empowerment is key. Yeah. I see that. Mm -hmm. So, cost is one of the biggest questions that a lot of people have. Uh, and I know different <laughs> rehab centers have, you know, different modalities for cost. But what would you say in general um, is... Yes, treatment cost. Yeah, has some cost aspect ha to it. Has, has yeah. some cost as aspect to mm -hmm. it. There's mm -hmm. uh, the medication, the stuff to be paid. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we do at Tigoni is you come, we, we sit, we look at all of those things, we, we look at uh, the best way in mm -hmm. which we can help each mm -hmm. other. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. the goal is one. The goal is to Take help up. overcome mm -hmm. addiction and mental health mm -hmm. challenges. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I see that. So as we bring this to a close, yes. um, how then can, you know, governments, county governments, you know, chip in to sort of like help, first of all, with deal with addiction? Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time prevent, um, you know, cases of, of addiction uh, here in the country. And what would be your message to the people who are watching us uh, as far as understanding the whole concept about rehabilitation centers? For the government and the county government, if we would see more programs addressing people's pain, mm -hmm. like, like I, I talked about uh, <coughs> addiction stems from uh, tr trauma. trauma. Mm -hmm. if, if we have if we have programs in place that mm. directly focuses on what people are going through, mm. we're talking about jobs, yeah. we, we are talking about education, we, we are talking about things people can use to empower themselves, mm. even before we get to the addict. Yeah. Prevention. Mm. You mm. get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for people um, who like to understand the rehabilitation program mm. and treatment, mm -hmm look at it from a point of um, recharging, mm. you know, okay. you've tried to recharge in other ways, it's mm. been failing, mm. now you have a chance to, mm. you know, deal with your pain, mm. deal with your issues, mm. not start afresh, mm. but come back to the old you mm. that you yeah. loved, that yeah. you knew and loved. Yeah. yeah, that's a powerful way to end the show. Recharge, <laughs> look at it as, as a form of recharge. Really, yes. really like that. Thank you very much, Japheth, uh, for not only giving us this beautiful insights, um, but also for hosting us today right here at Tigoni. I really, really appreciate that. And now I know you know better, um, you, know, you have a better understanding as far as what usually happens, right, in a rehabilitation center. What an insightful conversation we had today right here on your world as far as rehabilitation centers and understanding uh, the whole concept of the same. And the message is checking into an alcohol and drug rehabilitation center is one of the powerful fast steps towards overcoming addiction and embarking on a new healthy life. So I'm pretty sure you've learned a lot from today's conversation, but if you have any other question, feel free to engage with us on our socials down at the bottom of your screen. And if you missed out on any part of this show, feel free to log on to our website and that is uh, NTV Kenya and get more on the same, but also engage with us on our social media platforms. My name is Winnie Lubembe and a special thanks to Tigoni Treatment and Rehabilitation Center for hosting us today. Until next time stay safe and god bless goodbye can i just walk in uh, and then towards a conversation with Japheth and then i'll do my intro later 
Sasa naanza kusema hi welcome to the show. Wewe ni Lubeba.